Hello and welcome to VOA's Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Fungani. Thank you so much for joining us today. On this episode of Red Carpet, we look at Kizomba, an Angolan dance that is gaining popularity across the world. An artist in the Democratic Republic of Congo is creating portraits of the country's politicians using paint made from plastic waste. And a Ghanaian podcast encourages conversations on taboo topics. Let's get on with the show. And let's begin the show with some highlights of the latest entertainment news from around the world. And in music news, a host of prominent music stars performed at the inaugural Black Star Line Festival at Independence Square in Accra, Ghana. The festival was put together by American musicians Chance the Rapper and Vic Mensa with the goal of strengthening unity between Africans living in the diaspora and those on the continent. Several local and foreign artists performed on stage to celebrate African unity. The concert was named after the historic Black Star Line Sea Travel Initiative by Marcus Garvey. Ghanaian-American actor Michael Blackson has commissioned a free-for-all school in his hometown of Agonan Saba in Ghana. The Michael Blackson Academy, named after the actor, features a three-floor complex with tens of classrooms, state-of-the-art furniture, and other amenities that facilitate teaching and learning. Blackson released a statement on Twitter saying, Today is the greatest day of my life because I have finally accomplished what I always wanted to do, which is giving these kids a chance to be great. And let's go to Angola. The number of foreigners falling in love with Kizomba, an Angolan dance, increases in many countries of the world. And some have decided to travel all the way to the source to learn more about the culture. VOA's Isaias Suarez in Malanje, Angola has more. Kizomba is a musical genre and style of dance that originated in Angola and has spread to several countries. Kizomba's fame and acceptance is such that today tourists from all continents come to Angola to drink from the fountain, the wisdom of the dance steps and the culture that it carries. A group of 40 tourists from countries like Canada, China, Spain, United States and others came to the Angolan capital Luanda to learn more about Kizomba. Some of them came all the way to Njinga's land, Malanje, to participate in dance classes, check out monuments and tourist sites, and attend lectures on Angolan culture. Um, I learn uh, a lot of the interpretation of the music, the musicality, and also because in the Caribbean we have, uh, we live very close to Guadeloupe, which is the country of Kassav. And you know, Kassav has very close connection with Angola. So I like to find out more about where the connection is coming from and how I can fit it into what we do in the Caribbean. Um, it was a natural, a natural progression. There was lots of people who danced salsa in London and some started dancing Kizumba and it was word of mouth and we all tried and so on. Kizomba opens the country to tourism and helps spreading Angolan culture across borders. I travel miles to dance. I started dancing in 2016 or so. There is little information. What we can get is from the organization of the Luanda Semba Festival event that cares to show us, to bring us to Malange and cares to show us the Angolan culture. And now to some art news. An artist in the Democratic Republic of Congo is creating portraits of the country's politicians using paint made from plastic waste in what he says is a condemnation of their inaction when it comes to protecting the environment. Let's take a look. At first glance, they are typical portraits of politicians in Democratic Republic of Congo. But the smiling faces of leaders like current President Felix Tshisekedi and his predecessor, Joseph Kabila, have been brought to life through plastic waste. It's collected and melted down by artist Patrick Sikuru Siramwami. 
His work, he says, is a condemnation of political inaction to protect the environment. The big message today for the authorities, they must tell us how we are going to protect the environment. That's why I told myself that I must continue to use plastic waste, such as bags, bottles, used basins, that I process and make drawings. Sirimwami collects his materials by wading knee-deep through a mountain of plastic bottles near the banks of Lake Kivu in Congo's east. There is no public waste collection in the area. Sirimwami says the trash often causes breakdowns in the local hydroelectric plant, leading to power cuts. He says that's what inspired him to fight the problem, by reusing the discarded plastic. Congo, like other African countries, has insisted on its right to develop its economy by exploiting its vast natural resources. However, it has come under criticism for putting oil blocks up for auction in the world's second biggest rainforest. Authorities have claimed they will minimize the potentially devastating impact through modern drilling methods and tight regulation. And let's head over to West Africa in Ghana. The country has one of the most thriving podcast industries on the continent, with many local creators producing a variety of shows covering a range of topics. One of the most popular podcasts in Ghana is Sincerely Accra, an award-winning podcast that features the lives of young urban residents living in the capital Accra. I met up with some of the creators of the show and took a ride in one of the most popular forms of public transportation in the city. Check it out. It's a hot Sunday afternoon in a neighborhood located a few meters from the Atlantic Ocean. I made plans to meet up with two young Ghanaian creatives, Joseph Nti, he is the host of Sincerely Accra, the popular podcast among young Ghanaians in Accra and outside. We are also joined by Donald, the co-founder of Gold Coast Report. It's a podcast network that hosts Sincerely Accra and other forms of audio content. I asked both of them to join me for a ride in one of Ghana's most popular forms of public transportation. It's hot, it's hot, hot, hot. So there's no AC, right? No. <laughs> Do we pay extra for the AC? We are in a trotro. This is a part of a local public transportation here in Accra, Ghana. Uh, I'm with Joseph and Donald, uh, both of them podcasters, creatives uh, in the media space here, cultural space, uh, the movers and the shakers of things, you know, the new <laughs> young generation of Canadians. So this, what we're sitting in right now is a trotro. It's the main mode of transportation for most people living here in Accra. Um, there are two ways to get onto a trotro. You can go to the station, where it's stationary, and then you, you know, you load it, like load it. They wait for the whole thing to be full before it moves, or you wait at the different bus stops. Because what happens is, when people get off the space, and then you get on, and each trotro has its demarcated area that it's going to. Ooh. So you need to know where you're going and where to stand to get the trotro that's going where you're going. Tell us about Cecilia Accra. Cecilia Accra is. Across love letter to the world is the pulse of the nation. The podcast um, runs on Fox Pops and interviews with pe people of interest. You know, um, we started it in 2017 to get into conversations that are plaguing young people here in Accra. All sorts of things. You know, nothing is off limits on Cecilia Accra because it's the everyday conversations that we're having with our friends in our in our homes when we go out to drink, and we just take those conversations and put them on the podcast. And you know, you throw in a few popular sound bites and my crazy opinion and you have Sincerely Accra. Uh, what are some of the most popular topics you've had so far? The most popular subject matter on Sincerely Accra is definitely sex. You know, Ghanaians are a nation of sex habits but they just do not like to talk about it. So when you throw in, you know, the whole anonymity because when we do the Fox Pops, we don't know names and it's also an audio platform so they are more willing to talk about it. They see everything, you know. It's a taboo um, topic, still a taboo a, topic it, it is, in public. It, 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 yes, but, how people have it, who they have it with, it's just a taboo topic. Yeah. Um, another thing would definitely be relationships and dating because that's also closely tied 
tied into sex and then i would say the third thing, third thing is money you know salaries we've spoken about fresh graduate salaries how to manage in the economic stress that we're currently in this year so yeah money relationships dating and sex so how did you start into podcasting okay so there's always two things okay um the gcr network that's the gold coast report that's the network that you're assigned to mm. um i got invited to speak on a podcast and we have uh, the gcr guru right here yeah. uh, behind us donald yeah donald invited me to speak on a podcast that they had called free your mind um and before then i had just listened to serial you know the podcast with um i think um Adnan Saeed, he was wrongfully accused of murder. Yeah, I just finished listening to it and I liked the idea of a podcast. So I was talking with my producer and co-creator Kwame about how podcasting is cool, we should get into it. Because honestly, we got to know each other through creative means, you know. Um, and I got invited on uh, Free Your Mind. And so I went and I said, Kwame, listen, these guys are set up. I think we can write a proposal and get our podcast started. And that's what we did. They loved the idea. And yeah, five years down the line, Sincerely Cry is the number one podcast in Ghana. The Consumer Electronics Show closed this week in Las Vegas, Nevada. And for a week, organizers and exhibitors presented the latest technological innovations to participants from around the world. Some African startups at the event presented plans to establish partnerships in order to improve new technologies production on the continent. VOA's Thierry Quarry reports from Las Vegas. At the 11 sites of the Las Vegas Convention Center, more than 12,000 booths welcomed 3,200 inventors and more than 4,000 journalists and some 100,000 visitors, that is according to the organizers. Tech enthusiasts did not hesitate to try on new technologies such as virtual reality. I was wearing VR glasses and it took me on a roller coaster to some made up city. Um, it was really amazing, especially with the chair, um, feeling the movement. It actually felt like I was on a ride. At one point I was like, oh no, am I gonna fall out of this chair? Like it really did feel real and I could look around, shift my head and it really was um, a very immersive experience. Well, I'm here as part of a, a company, Mega In Tech, where um, we're walking the show, um, looking at all this amazing technology, seeing what's out there, um, seeing potential markets, and just really seeing what the future is going to be like. Africans present at the show were particularly interested in technologies more adapted to Africa in areas such as agriculture, finance, or digital media. For five years now, we have been attending CES regularly to discover everything that is happening in the world in terms of new technologies and innovation with the goal of really getting our country in tune with the best at the international level. We want to meet the international private sector in order to forge strategic partnerships that will allow our country really to enter the digital era and bring added value to the country and allow the Senegalese people to rise to the top in the field of technology. The CES 2023 technology show has kept all its promises and the next edition will take place in January of 2024. You <laughs> Thank you for watching VOA's Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at voaafrica.com. We are also on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube where you can watch our videos. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye everyone.